Hey everyone, this is Nitro. In this video, I'm going to be doing a few more interesting Apex Arena videos, and it's going to cover some of the uh, matches that I've had since uh, that were worth watching. So the first one is about Leon, which was honestly kind of ridiculous. Um, <laughs> let's just get started. And I'm going to skip the battle preparation phase because my opponent has Leon. So there's not too much to say in this one. Um, it's just a quick demonstration. But in brief, I have the force the enemy to be tankless. So they have Tiaris, they have Leon, they have Lambda, Clarets, and Zerda. No tank though. Whereas I have Landius with Tiaris. I have Juggler as my second tank, Omega, and Luna. So this is, is a massively advantageous battle to me. Just maneuvering initially, you know, getting my characters and their skills activated while staying outside of the enemy Zerida's range. So here I have my juggler activate the faction buff to buff up Luna and Tiaris. And the enemy is just grouping up. And here I miracle up in preparation for the enemy assault. So I made sure that I was outside of the range of the enemy Zerida. So, and now the enemy Leon here. comes charging forward, smashes me, thorns, and reflection, activates, and Leon kills himself. <laughs> so, he doesn't even get to use his AoE Blue Dragon Strike as a result, because thorns made him because he did damage and so the damage reflection combined with Landis's counterattack damage killed off this Leon just like that. So another example of why I don't think Leon is anywhere near to being a top tier character of the PvP. Right? As long as your opponent has forms in chain, you can cause the enemy Leon to kill themselves. And it's 5v4 right there, you know, the battle continues, but I'm gonna quit this replay at this point. You know, I have two tanks, a healer, he has four characters, no tank, you know, like, there's nothing he can do to pull a victory at this point. You know? Especially since I can very easily stay out of range of the enemy, if I so wish. As I just did by retreating back and so on. So we'll retreat there. So that was the first battle. Kind of... <laughs> Another example of why I don't really think Leon is anywhere near top tier. Another battle that I was going to show is this one against Pikachu, number 2. And this is another standard tank push type strategy. Um, you know, usual there to ban on both sides, and he plays Landius, and I ban the enemy Hiei and Lestelle, trying to get rid of all the assassins and of course Lestelle, right? But because this is a standard build player, he has four healers, Chloe, Iris, Liana, and Tiaris. So I had to do a, the normal type of pick ban as opposed to my usual triple healer ban, right? So both sides play Landius. I lose my Omega and Lestelle, so Zerda, Omega, Lestelle. Right? And he plays Luna. I now ban the enemy Bozel and Juggler and play my own Juggler to start. So I did it. I'm doing a tank push strategy. Two tanks. Enemy now bans my Yulia and Leonhard. Okay. Bit of a surprise to me there. Um, enemy plays Lena and I ban the enemy Shuri and Rachel. So, so far I've been kind of banning, you know, character tour on faction of the opponent. I chose not to ban Claret here because I have double tank, so I'm not that afraid of Claret. And now I play Owen to take on the enemy Landius. I lose Liana and Tiaris at last, and he plays their Tiaris, and I now ban the Claret and Liana, yeah. leaving them with just two healers left. And I play my Iris for teleportation of my Elwyn. Finally, I lose Shafaniel and Bozel, AoE Strikers. So it was very interesting. Luna never got banned, I'm not sure why. So I got to play my Luna as the very last character. It's a very odd pick ban. Usually Luna gets banned way earlier, especially if you're allowed to play Juggler to faction buff. 
right? So in any case though, battle begins. Opponent has two healers and two damage dealers. I have two tanks and a healer, as well as two damage dealers. So, you know. And the enemy Luna chose to bring Queen's Ascension to buff up Lana. Ah. Uh, okay. So, because this is a slightly older replay, I'm not allowed to pause. Okay. So I'm going to have to quickly jump right back in, and I'll have to discuss as fast as I can while the match is going on. Unfortunately. So no pausing allowed. And the replay will work. So the enemy starts approaching with the Landius, of course, right? Maneuvering forward, I do pretty much the same thing. Landius up. Enemy now drops a summon, and I just start pushing forward aggressively. And they attack blessing their land in preparation. So now, I'm just pushing up and I start with Elwyn moving up and activating his faction buff and he breathes right there, which is critical. In addition, I even got mobility increase on my Elwyn, so Elwyn now I think has plus 3 mobility for 2 turns. And finally, I set up Luna with Wind God Realm. Because, and then faction buff, because I'm planning to push everyone into attack at this point. So, Pikachu starts playing defensive, activating the guard skill, and then I push my Landius up into a position where he can guard Elwyn. So my opponent decides to retreat instead. Okay. So since he retreated, I pushed my Landius even further forward to teleport. And he responds by teleporting his Landius back. But despite that teleport, my Elwyn still has enough mobility to charge in, especially with Luna's Wind God Realm. Elwyn goes in, Sword Soul, one shots enemy Landius, he revives, but he has cannot be healed. On him. The enemy now attacks my Landius. But doesn't do all that much. And I push in Juggler, using Great Dragon Barrier. And my opponent miracles up, but Langius has cannot be healed, so he doesn't do him much good, right? And since Luna has to act, I just have him kill off the enemy summon. Now Langius takes a second hit from the enemy Luna and actually doesn't die. So it shows how Luna without having the attack skill can actually be relatively weak. So now I have my Luna strike and finish off the enemy Landius very easily. Now a huge part of this is also the enemy Landius wasn't that strong. I just saw that it had 618 defense. Right? So that was probably one of the issues too. But keep in mind that's also because of Sword Soul, right? Elwyn Sword Soul stripped that Landius of a lot of buffs. In any case though, so the enemy is trying to kill off my Landius, attacking it multiple times, with character, one character after another. No. Lana killed Landius once, but that was it. No. He revived and got healed. So now I have my Elwyn crush his second character, right? I still have all five of my characters, my enemy has three. So Lena finally finishes off my Landius, and now my juggler tank is in play. And he's trying to buff up Lena to hopefully seeming hoping to deal with my whole party. Well, Elwyn strike, Elwyn kills. Juggler. Beast Shock doesn't kill Lana because I didn't have the full buff, but Beast Shock locks them down so he can't move. 
So burning one number one, and he just gives up at this point. So this battle was shown because in large part it shows just how deadly high mobility parties can be, right? I with Wind God Realm, I was able to push in so aggressively and just force the enemy back and crush them. Yeah. Very, very rapidly. So you proper use of Wind God Realm can be key. And proper use of Iris's teleport can be key as well. And there we have it. The second kind of interesting battle. It just shows another strategy that's available to you in Apex Arena, right? Luna with Wind God Realm is just devastating when used properly. All right, so the last two battles that I'm going to show will be newer battles. Um, and the first one is going to be a loss that I had against Manson, who is currently actually ranked fourth. Okay. Uh, fairly interesting battle. And in large part, I lost because of poor selection of skills. Or at least it could have been much closer. You know, there's still no guarantee I would have won with better skill selection, but let's, let's just demonstrate it. So, Zero the ban, I, and I noticed once again, Manson is also running that three healer strategy that's very common right now. So he banned my Zerda, I start by banning his Liana, um, and he's banned all three of my assassins. So Zerda, Omega, and Illustrial to start. And he plays Landius. So at this point, I banned his last two healers, Iris and Wilder, and played Listel. I now get Liana and Wilder banned, and my opponent plays Rachel. So I now ban the opponent Zerida and Yulia, while playing Tieris on my side. Which was probably a mistake in banning selection there just now. But regardless, I now lose Shafiniel and Bozel, and he gets to play Listel as a result. Right? So that's why I mentioned it might have been a banning error at that step. Right? Yulia and Zerida. Regardless though, we'll continue, and I now ban the remaining assassins of Manson, which is Hiei and Illustrial as well, and I play my Luna. Okay. I lose Yulia and Iris now, he plays Yusuke, and I finally ban Luna and Juggler, playing my own Juggler, leaving him the choice between Leonhard and Mystery Knight, and he plays Leonhard. All right. so, Pretty quick pick bands face. Um, he has no effective healer, although he has a lot of characters that can kind of self heal, right? Rachel, if she does damage, will heal up allies, right? Leonhard can self heal, Yusuke can self heal, and he even had Listel bring Demon God Bulwark for some healing. Okay, so let's just begin. Initially, I'm just kind of maneuvering forward a bit, getting my characters into place. Oh, and finally, I also had Juggler here bring a faction buff. So faction buff Triton Great Dragon Barrier. And the mistake was on... The mistaken skill selection was on Tiaris. I don't know why. I thought I had Attack Blessing here, but I didn't. So I thought I was bringing Heal, Attack Blessing, Holy Missile. I instead brought Heal, Mass Heal, and Holy Missile, which ended up being a major problem. So, Manson charges forward initially, right? I'm just setting up in the back, so faction buff there. And... So he's pushing forward aggressively, right? And I'm... And at this point, I chose to have Luna, Wind God Realm, and Raging Thunder. See, this is where Attack Blessing would have helped a lot, right, to do damage here, but I didn't have it. So that was the first strike with Luna. So, the second strike with Luna, right, takes out Landius for the first time. And then I retreat Luna back. Meanwhile, I'm just hovering back, activating Tranquility, you know, staying as far back as possible while activating my various um, combat skills. So, Great Dragon Barrier is next. 
He gets to use Reaper's Touch on my TRS now. And I just move TRS further back. And finally, I launch a Reaper's Touch on the enemy Leonhard. Okay. Because I know Leonhard, after he attacks, will heal. So I was figuring I would self-damage this Leonhard quickly. He gets to launch out an Arcane Blast from Rachel, healing up his party a bit. So that was actually another uh, bit of a mistake on my part, but not the end of the world kind of thing. And then so I respond with uh, Mind Boar from Lestelle for now. He does the same to me. Mind Boar. Right. And at this point, I have Juggler Triton Forward. Right. He launches his first AoE with Leonhard. Right. It self damages a lot, then does a single target strike, and because of Thorn's activation, Leonhard killed himself. So, works for me, okay. overall. The question, the interesting thing would have been if Juggler would have died to Leonhard's single target strike. I don't think he would have, but I can't guarantee it. Would have been interesting to see if I didn't activate Thorns, because I still had, after all, uh, you know, considered in water and takes physical damage for allies. In any case, battle continues. I'm just moving characters that I can, but here, Juggler gets killed by Yusuke's attack. Right? And he continues to self heal, as we see. I'm just kind of maneuvering my characters forward now. And. This is where I probably made my biggest mistake. Charging Listelle forward like this and having her blood dance here. Uh, because Landius' guard skill is about to wear off. For now, there's a mass heal. He chooses gospel. Right? And now I have Luna attack. And this is where it was absolutely fatal. Luna died attacking there. That's probably what really, really lost me the match more than anything else. First, Luna failed to kill Landius, leaving him with 265 hit points. And second, he died. Well, she died while attacking, right? Um, what could it solve that? I think for sure if I had attack blessing on Tiaris, that would not have occurred, right? Because in the, if I had attack blessing, the Holy Pegasus would have been taking 20% damage, right? Holy Pegasus have 50% damage reduction, plus attack blessing 30% damage reduction, that would be an 80% damage reduction on the attack. And in addition, the 30% additional damage would have killed Landius. So an attack blessing in that situation rather than the mass heal probably would have made all the difference there, at least, or very likely would have. So now this is where it becomes really troublesome. I end Landis' turn, and now Listel gets struck. She does live, though. But my second mistake is here. I had Landis finish off the enemy uh, Landis, and now Rachel gets to strike kill off my Listel and heal up. Okay. So at this point it's completely over. Yeah. Full hit point Rachel, full hit point Yusuke, and Listel is around too. Is there anything I could have done there? I, well, at the very least, if it would have been a different fight if, for example, Luna killed off the enemy Landius and survived, right? Even if she survived with barely any hit points, her living would have changed the mechanics of this fight a lot. Especially since I wouldn't have had to waste an attack to take out the enemy Landius, for example. Um, and then once that character was dead, you know, I would be able to use Listel much more aggressively, for example, to attack. So I wouldn't have had to have Landius attack, I could have had Landius guard 
activate his guard skill initially, for example, and then things would have changed quite a bit. But as it was, due to Delendia surviving, this fight turned into a loss. So in some ways, you know, I've definitely made a mistake with not bringing the right skill on Tiaris, right? The Holy Missile choice was just terrible, okay? Especially. But things that also could have changed this fight for sure was just, uh, you know, it was, it turned into a stat check and I lost the stat check against this Landius, long story short. But interesting battle nonetheless. Um, very much could have gone very differently if I had slightly more stats. Even with the bad skill selection on my part, right? So that was the pretty interesting battle against Manson, you know? Um, and then the final battle I'm going to go over is this one where my opponent had a lot of assassins. So, he can also follows the current meta of having just three healers, right? Liana, Tiaris, Iris. So, I lose my Zerida, and I begin by banning the enemy's Liana, right? And play my Landius. Pretty much my standard pick ban, right? So I've lost Zerida, Illustrial, and Listel so far, and my opponent gets to play Zerida to start, right? So, given that's the case, I chose to ban both Juggler and Landius. He now no longer has a tank. And then I follow up with playing Luna. My opponent now bans my Wilder and Yulia, so starting to get rid of healers as well as Yulia for damage dealing, and plays Ye. So that's two assassins now. Okay. So I choose to ban the enemy Luna and Lestel for now, what I feel are bigger threats, and play my Omega. Right. So he's continuing to ban my healers, so Iris and Tiaris are now gone. So, and plays Iris on his side. So, I ban Yulia and Elwyn at this point, since I after all have Landius as my tank, and choose to play Liana, right, my last healer. So, being able to pick my healer this late is an advantage of having four healers, right? So, now Juggler and Shafaniel are banned. Makes sense. Princess, basically buffs for Luna were banned. And my opponent plays Joshua. And finally, I ban Bozel and Sakura. Uh, the bigger long range AoE threats, in my opinion. And I choose to play Bozel, leaving him with the pick of Lana and Tiaris. And he chose to bring Tiaris. So, pretty interesting pick ban phase. Uh, he ended up with two healers and three assassins. I ended up with a tank, healer, assassin, Luna, and Bozel. But this battle was kind of interesting, okay? Uh, initially, I just start... I begin by moving forward with Landius, and... Let me just turn on Danger Zone and continue. So, he begins by moving his Zerida up. Or, yeah, to the up. And so I move my, my uh, Luna forward. Oh, one thing I should mention. Okay. So after moving Luna forward, I act again her so that she's ready to strike the enemy. Okay. And I actually had Luna bring two <laughs> movement skills in this case. Wind God Realm and Wind Spiral. Because uh, he had no tank. So my only worry is getting Luna into range to attack. So two mobility skills in this case. I didn't, have, I didn't think I would have any problems killing these targets, just getting into range would be the issue. Right. Um, other than that, the interesting thing here is he has a shockingly well-built Joshua. Very high hit points, right? 92-93 with 591 defense, much higher than you would usually see on an assassin style character. And so I, the other reason I did this was because Luna, I knew, could not get hit by the Dark Demise skill, due to where Joshua was positioned initially. But, so he uses Legendary to Iris, and actually manages to haste up his Joshua. Annoying. Frustrating. Okay. So, the Tenyo's row buff on Joshua changed things a little bit, 
because now Joshua can wrap around and Dark Demise my Luna. Since I already moved my healer, I can't even heal her up. So instead, what I've done is shift her down and have a Wind God Realm in the south. And the reason for that was to give my Omega an extra mobility so that he can attack the enemy Joshua. Okay. So this Omega has 1306 attack you know, with the faction buff. And he also has, after all, Deadly, giving another 12% attack. So with that, I felt like I had Omega, activate, and attack. And shockingly, shockingly, this Joshua actually survived. It actually only survived with around two, around 300 hit points. Okay, that was it. Around roughly 300 hit points. But it actually did manage to survive Omega's strike with the Dark Elf snipers doing full damage and everything, which was a very shocking, unpleasantly shocking surprise to me. So massive stat check there, but this Joshua was actually upgraded enough to survive. It is what it is. Just like that first game, this was another massive stat check that I failed. Regardless, opponents activates CA to attack, does some AOE damage to me, and then uses the an attack skill to finish off my Omega. So in response for now, I AOE heal my characters, right? Because they they were heavily damaged. So he responds with Phantom Raid plus fixed damage. Doesn't kill my Luna. Similarly, I guess a similar kind of stat check, but in my case, to be honest, my Luna's not really meant. It, she's actually not built for hit points. Um, she was built for pure magic defense. But despite that, she still has enough stats to survive Joshua's Phantom Raid. Right? After all, Phantom Raid is an AoE attack, right? Um, 0 0.3 times AoE damage. It really should not kill your characters in one shot in general, unless they're already heavily damaged. But Liana's healing. Let them recover. So, at this point, it is 5v4, and I'm just kind of maneuvering forward a bit while staying outside of the enemy Zerida's range. He now activates Miracle to keep his assassins alive, shifts up a little bit, and I now put Hiei to sleep with my Bozo. So, that knocks him out and should prevent him from, you know, from acting and double striking him. So now that he's been put to sleep, I have Luna Wind Spiral to heal up a bit and attack. And that was enough to finish off here. So now we're at 4v4. So bringing the double skills on Luna paid off there because Wind Spiral healed him up via prayer before she, Luna attacked. And I'm just hovering back for now, right? And I actually chose to gospel up Landia, so I just wasn't sure what to do there. So probably should have just gospeled Liana instead, in hindsight. Or had, but no. That was my choice, and I continue to move Liana to have her heal up. So that maneuver was for Liana's prayer to heal her up, although she didn't actually hit full hit points on the Shrine Maidens. Interestingly enough. So, missing a tiny bit of heal there. Just 24 hit points in heal, which means I need to increase my Liana's intelligence a bit more. Moving on. So I'm just hovering back, and now Joshua comes back and launches another Dark Reaper on me. So, I'm hanging back, but Zerida now gets to move, charge in, and assassinate Liana. I'm actually not too worried about that one, because I simply have Luna, Wind God Realm, and Strike. Right. So with this, Zerida dies, Right. Back to 3v3. And 
game. He continues to hover in the back. While I just start maneuvering forward to engage. So there's been quite a few trades of characters thus far. So at this point, I now have Luna charge forward to assault. And once again, Joshua survives, this time with 591 hit points. Shockingly unkillable by my characters. It's been rather unpleasant to see. But with that, I was able to, you know, have Luna retreat three tiles. So now, I choose to have Landius charge in and attack the enemy Iris. And the enemy Joshua finishes off my Luna, which is fine, because I can AoE with Black Hole to finish off the enemy Iris there. So, things are going more or less as well. At this point, I now have Bozo put Joshua to sleep. And because he's been put to sleep on Poison Fog, he's dead. So Bozo bringing Black Hole, Dark Waltz, and Sleep. The sleep is completely ripping apart his team, right? Putting Hiei to sleep allowed me to kill Hiei without taking any retaliation damage. Putting Joshua to sleep has now killed Joshua. He attempts to retreat back with his Tiaris and attack blessing, so I just have my Landius chase after Tiaris and attack her. And now it's two against one. I get to go first because Joshua's sleep is considered a turn, and that gave my Landius the opportunity to attack the enemy Tiaris and finish it off. So very interesting battle. You know, I, it actually went from me going first to since I used Act again on turn one to my opponent going first, but uh, yeah, I mean, very unique for sure. I really did not expect the Joshua in particular to survive the attack from my Omega. That was truly, truly unpleasant and made this battle way closer than it should have been, but it just shows there's, at the high Langrisser rank level, there's quite a few stat checks. You know? And that 300 hit points, it's, I think what it is, is it means I, my Omega, truly need a max attack uh, enchant on the Ullers bow. It's currently 12%. I think the extra 3% attack would be enough to give me the extra 300 damage. So, yeah. Looks like I'm going to have to reroll enchants on the Ullers bow to try to get more attack, and even if it gives reduced hit points for good or for ill. As for the other enchants, right, I'm probably not going to try to roll for 5% here. It's going to be too hard to get hit points and attack. Same thing for here, right? But, uh, and then the Slayer's Emblem has 9% attack, 8% crit. I can't really expect much more out of that. So, the only way I can get more attack, really, is getting a better roll on my other's bow here. So that he can do more damage. But, yeah. Interesting stat check there, just now, for sure. We'll see what happens with regards to that. You know, I could also get another 7 attack increase here by re-rolling some of these, but that's going to be pretty rough to get as well. And I actually don't have any SSR attack scrolls at this time. So, But there is some room for improvement, right? Like I said, there's I can get 7 more attack here. I can get 3% more attack on the other's bow. Theoretically, I could get 15% attack and plus attack enchant if you get ridiculously lucky. But realistically, I'm just gonna probably have to swap this enchant out for plus 15% attack and, and give up on that 7% hit points. Yeah. So, there we have it. Four more battles in Apex Arena. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you found these battles interesting. And on that note, Nitro out.